Welcome to a Delco Nerd Network Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Ricucci, and this is Replay, Relive, and Re-Experience. As we like to call it, Re3 is where you guess that we sit down, do all three of those things to our favorite video game series. In this edition of Re3, we're going to be replaying, reliving, and re-experiencing the Halo franchise, starting with Combat Evolved and ending with Halo 5 Guardians in anticipation for, you guessed it, Halo Infinite here to go on Master Chief Saga with me as always the triple threat Chris Trio a pleasure Gooch and Delaware County Zone Chris Geddes welcome welcome guys thank you for having me back as Again. one of these days as, like we're gonna, said, you're, you're gonna grow a little always. bit too much and we're gonna have to not let you but like for, as of right now you're in it so just you know we just have to get you're you're on thin ice all right for no absolute reason at all Gooch, <laughs> Gooch was saying stuff the other day and I didn't want to oh, really? say anything but speaking of that uh thanks for the follow back on the the duck and they're in. Uh, yeah, the I don't Twitter. think I I don't think I, I I think I forgot you had a Twitter. Yeah, no, I just so, I just knew I didn't know you guys had like actual like. All, yeah, like, no, Twitter we tweet. Accounts. Yeah, we do we do tweets. I my Twitter account is barely existent. Mm -hmm. well, like my personal one. Well, yeah, and then I just restarted. It. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just didn't. Twitter, I, Twitter's hard. It's hard. Well, and it's also that's annoying. Like, I, I just was sick of seeing thing. like all my like high school friends tweet, and so like I just was like, I want to start fresh on here with just shit I care about. I've been slowly unfollowing people from high school. No, no I think yeah. like it's just smart. That's why I got rid of my Facebook, man. I just I no, need, it's true. Honestly, it. the only thing keeping me on Facebook now is our page. Huh. Like, if we didn't have that, I would delete my <laughs> Facebook probably. Yeah, a hundred percent. Even like Instagram, I possibly think about doing that. I'm looking for a I way to like Instagram. set. Yeah, I, lo I love Instagram. I love it. Instagram too, but like I just know, like I put, so I've started putting timers on my like app stuff just because I'm just like, <laughs> really? I, well, just because I'm like, I want to see how much I'm using a day. Like, so oh, I put I, like I a time, like, like, like I put an hour t like limit on like Instagram. So like basically once I hit an hour, it says like, I can just turn it off yeah. like immediately. Oh, I was but it's say, more like lock you out. No, 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 no. It like, like you, code. you can yeah. do that. I guess that's for like more children, like children and stuff. But like. Like, yeah, no, I don't know. I just because then I'm like, all right, I've been on this for like an hour today. Maybe I should relax for the rest of the day. <laughs> like, I've been staring. Man, but that's like, Instagram. Yeah, it's it's. It I think they're helpful, but it also does then tell you your hours at the end of the week, and it's like you averaged in ten hours on your phone every yeah, day. Yeah, I'm I know like, Instagram. Huh? Tells that. I only like, use it for memes. Honestly, I don't use it for anything else. Yeah, it's true. But Gooch, I don't what? Post. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, I don't post. But what levels are we talking about today, Gooch? This is episode 16, and we'll be playing through the two longest levels in Halo 3, the Ark and the Covenant. Not to be confused with the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. You think they did that on purpose? I was honestly thinking that kind it's a of little like, too it's, on it's the very nose. much like, and I, I don't know. I, I'd assume just, so. It, it just seems so. Maybe it just so, landed like that. Yeah. It, they might have like just like put, parsed it out and they've been like... Yeah, this nice. is this is, yeah this worked out. I don't know. So, I'd be curious. So as of recording this, what's the, uh, today? The sixth of yes, July. Correct. So yesterday we just released the the finale of Halo Combat Evolved. So we are one game into release releasing yeah. order, and we are oh, at the, oh, at the end of the third game. <coughs> yep. <clears throat> so yeah, and Chris, you were saying you you you've literally watched that. Listen to all them. Yeah, all them through. Yeah. What yeah, do you, yeah. what do you think of the like the final product? It's good. I like uh, the music. Fingers, awesome. He, yeah. he does a real good job. Yeah, shout yeah. to him. Shout it, out to fingers. It's, yeah. It tickles my fancy. Our, oh yeah, our definitely. Intro. Absolutely. Yeah. Big, I feel. I props. really felt like that was something. Like, and if we if we do this with another game, who knows where we're gonna be at the end of this? But like, I would like to like every game series we do. It only feel like it makes sense to like get an intro to like, I agree. go oh, yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the. Uh, I'll, I'll continue back. Yeah, I like the the audio cues and the audio clips. I like no, it's actually I I've listened puts to you a in couple. That space. I don't listen to many of our podcasts back. <clears throat> I it depends. Sometimes mm. I sometimes I'll listen to them back. Um it, it really just I don't like depends. watching them. I don't know why I don't like watching me <laughs> on screen. Yeah. I don't like like I, listening to them to I don't mind. But so like do you like listening to yourself? Does that not bug you? It, it's definitely a little weird, but it do, does bug me. It a doesn't bit, it, it's it not something how that like your own all. voice does sound different. Mm -hmm. Like to you like it, it's to you? You, you know, it's like it is the same voice, obviously, but you hear right. just like a slightly different I mean obviously my voice we were is happy coming from that side. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I was in love, not afraid of anything. <laughs> then I beat Halo One. And god damn it. I lost everything. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's been cool to see uh, some of the feedback we've been getting on the podcast. I, Absolutely. Just, just this one, somebody left a comment. I forget what it was. Where do you see them at? Uh, this is on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, so I didn't even know. With I the just... podcasts, 
What's what's weird is like with Apple Podcasts, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can only review and you can leave a comment. Yeah, you can't okay. comment on Spotify. You can't do any of that. I noticed that. There's like no reviews. It's like there's no engagement. Oh, there's no reviews at all. I didn't no. know that on yeah. Spotify. Nope. Wow. Yeah. So the only podcast app I know that has reviews is Apple Podcasts, and then obviously YouTube is has the old YouTube thing. Um, hmm. Yeah. How many comments? Actually, it's funny. I rarely. Check uh, there was later. there was one comment yesterday. I kind of forget what it was, but I I replied to it. But it was it was nice. That's awesome. We always appreciate some positive feedback. Yeah. We're doing oh, this because yeah. it's fun, and it's always nice that people actually enjoy it. <laughs> on yeah. top of that, there was one on the second episode uh, by Peter Simpson. He says, "Cool show. It reminds me of the Nerd Crew. I wish it talked about more interesting things, but it's still nice to listen to." Yeah, S smile. Like yeah. Hey, the yeah the one the one from yesterday was on the fifth episode. I don't know if you want to go to it. Yeah. Since why not? <laughs> episode <laughs> three. Here. The pin the pin comment is how does how does Master Chief poop? That was a good one. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was, was my favorite. One. Yeah, I feel I was like, I we have to put that in the blurb. Absolutely. All right, let's see. Let's go to the fifth one. Oh wow! Probably my new favorite series from you guys. This and the Indiana Jones one. Awesome, dude. Love the, to hear. the 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 Indiana Jones we were interview. Uh, it did well. That's good. Like, I love hearing that. Makes it, me happy because yeah, that was what I, I've been think, wanting to do for a while. Yeah, I, I think like view wise and like what I looked at, I'm like, it, it who was that with? Well. I think it was, was like uh, Phil Pat Bat Donovan. Pat Donovan. Okay. So yeah. by another the way, regal, another regal fellow. guy. We're, it, go we, ahead, I, I was like going to say, yeah, I don't think we've ever explained that uh, we all used to work at Regal. And no, I guess we I didn't. Chris. Yeah. No, yeah, that's how Chris we met. Not to be confused with Chris Triano. Of course. Uh, I actually Trian. was there before everyone. So oh, yeah. I like yeah, thank you very much. I was a, but no, that was a... Oh, man, the movie theater. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> it literally feels like a fucking Lifetime. different world. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy shit. Well, you know what was fun? It's, sorry. Quick sidebar. Yeah. I still remember working the fucking ticket booth or whatever at, at uh, Regal and a guy walks in. He's probably like, I don't know, 28. He's like, oh, is uh, so-and-so here? I'm like an old manager, I guess. I'm like, no. He's like, oh, man, I used to work here like eight years ago. It's crazy to see it like that. And like now it's like we walk Ooh. in there and we're like, that's us. That's, that's us. Weird. Like, I don't well, like that at I, all. I, I, I even say like I like going there now because like I don't know anyone. You know who's a manager at Edgemont now? Kareem. I saw that. I was in there recently. Yeah, I, I went there. I didn't think he would stay there that long enough to be a manager. He didn't. He left oh. and came back, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, but I was like, holy shit. I was like, no long time to see, man. Yeah, yeah it was, like, it was funny. Good. I went. I, I saw him when I saw New Mutants last year. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so the, the theater just opened. Like, uh. we're the only ones in there. Anyway, let's talk about our first level of this episode. The Ark is the seventh campaign level of Halo 3. It takes place in a desert that comprises of one of the most center regions of the Ark. Located uh, two to the 18th power light years outside of the Milky Way Galaxy Center. This in this level, the Covenant Separatists and human side with 343 Guilty Spark and his Sentinels to ally uh, his Sentinel allies to access the cartographer and find the Prophet of Truth. So we haven't really talked about it. You're probably asking, if you don't know, what is the Ark exactly? Um, one thing I think Halo doesn't do a good job is explaining a anything mm -hmm. I, they, they like even playing through this and i'll get when we get to it in the covenant i'm like i don't think i realized this was happening no yeah, yeah. how many times i played through this game mm -hmm. and i'm like i i think it's the audio mixing i think it's I, just the I way think, the writing yes. is like i'm like it's not apparent to me that certain things are happening but no i agree have you i, I tried putting on subtitles and i don't think they work really? especially like in game like you would think really? you would think that they would like make it so you could hear the background dialogue and stuff in game because the sound mixing oh, yeah, is terrible I, three games and three games in and they still haven't haven't fixed it mm -hmm. um, I know, but like you can't hear the idle dialogue between people or like truth truth is talking throughout one of these missions for a majority of it and you couldn't really tell you that's really true see. yeah it's yeah it, it, it's looking at these things where it's like yeah what are truth sermons what is he talking about and mm -hmm. it's like yeah it's relevant it's not like the most it, it sometimes not the most interesting thing but i think it gives you context so again absolutely what is the arc installation zero zero is an egg enig enigmatic enigmatic forerunner it, it's just uh, i think it's enigmatic 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 yeah i don't know i might be wrong enigmatic Potato forerunner Potato. installation from which all the halo installations across the galaxy can be activated simultaneously in addition it functions as a safe haven from the halo network's strategic pulse as well as a facility to construct and repair any of the halo arrays um so yeah it's it's the it's the mother of all bombs and it makes them. Mm. It makes them. It controls so, them. I it's guess the it's the it's the it's the like 
the big the, the big the, the big printer. boy cartographer. Sure, like it does it all. Interesting, because that's again one of those things that you were saying that is not as apparent is insane to me that I did not know this time. Right, like, I like. We'll get they to just it. they just go from Earth to another desert, yeah. and, and you kind of don't have context for not at all. Where but then, you like are. by the end of the second ep- the second level that we're talking about, I was like, wait, they were doing this? I don't even re- like. Re- we'll ta- yeah, I, we'll talk I hope it. it's the same part. I think so too. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. uh, what? What? Yeah, yeah it's like, like uh, wait. Yeah, like I don't remember that at all. All right, so the separatist cruisers and carriers arrive. At the other side of the slip space portal, like colossal structures below them, and a blue a br- blute. A brood <laughs> fleet is straight ahead. We cut to the bridge of the shadow of the intent. A Sangheili major. Brute ship, staggered staggered line, shipmaster. They outnumber us three to one. Who wants to be shipmaster? Uh, I'll be shipmaster. Then it is an even fight. All cruisers fire at will, burn their mongol eyes. All the shipmaster's lines are great. Yeah. Really good. Uh, I'll be Johnson. Who wants to be Commander Keys? I'll do Keys. Okay. Did you want to read that? Oh, yeah. ODST is a Marines board a Pelican with the Chief. Truth's ship isn't taking part in the attack. He must have gone to ground. Roger that, man. We're on him. Kick the, kick the door. He says that to the pilot. Hocus drops from the UNSC forward unto dawn with five other Pelicans as they breach the Loyalist fleet. One is shot uh, and destroyed by Seraph fighter interceptors, and the rest make it unscathed. During the descent, two fleets begin to engage each other. As the as they enter the atmosphere, the chief checks on Johnson and Hocus in the cockpit and returns to the back where he where he sits with several ODSTs and Marines readying themselves for battle. Um... I'll, I'll 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 point it out later. So now we're in the game plan. The ODST ODST goes. That's some view, like exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy while you can, Marines. As soon as we land, we're going right back at it. Priority one: secure landing zone for the commander's frigate. Keep your eyes and ears open. We need all the intel we can get on wherever the hell we are. Like Johnson doesn't even yeah. fucking know. <laughs> Wait, so I'm confused. So they're on a okay. They're on the so arc. They're, they're on, on the part arc, of the but, arc. Okay, so that, that I guess is confusing because. I was like, "Oh, are we on a Halo ring?" But now, I, I, would, I now I realize no, we are on the arc. Pretty it's much just a, another Halo ring. It, uh, it, it's, I, it's, a, it's the original Halo ring. Is the idea right? Like you were saying, it printed them all, it controls them all, but it's not a ring. Right. It's a big. It's just the like, arc. starfish looking. It's an arc. Yes. Yeah. It's the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. Like literally. Oh, <laughs> oh, There's man. no was... <laughs> way that wasn't on purpose. I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> Oh. We make our way through Covenant encampments and arrive at a crashed pelican. There, we'll gear up and mount up on some mongoose. Mongoose. Mon- I see it in mongoose. there. <laughs> I wrote it out and I was like, remember the last episode? Or some prowlers, and then we'll move our way to the LZ's location. And this is the first time we can get in the prowler. The Type 52 infantry support vehicle, a.k.a. the Brute Prowler, is a Covenant loyalist ground vehicle used by the Brutes. In Halo 3, specifically. The Prowler is the Jirohani, Jirohani equivalent to the UNSC Warthog and the Covenant Spectre. It's aesthetically similar in its clear-cut, brutal nature to the Brute Chopper. The concept of its anti-gravitational propulsion is similar to that of the Choppers as well, but differs, di- but differs by utilizing two dual engines rotating in opposite directions. Some trivia. The Prowler was originally... Be- Gonna was originally going to be called the Mauler, like the shotgun we'll be talking about in this episode as well. The Prowler can hold the highest number of passengers of any drivable Covenant vehicle in Halo 3. One driver, one turret, gunner, and two riders. I really like all the brute weaponry in this game a lot. I didn't I, realize how yeah. they really did give them their like specific own. Like in the last and two, you get more of the Covenant stuff, uh, but whereas like, or I'm sorry, the the elite stuff, I guess. We do. There's a few cup per weapons, obviously. But I like seeing all these different... I totally forgot about this it's, fucking vehicle. And, and that's kind of the thing. It's like, it's interesting. It's like, okay, like, they don't really, like... There is one thing we're going to talk about that specifically says it was, like, manufactured, like, right before the schism. I forget what it is, but mm. I, I remember putting it down. But I'm just like... Yeah, like, wh- like how, where did all these things just come from? Like, did they just, like, scrap this shit together? Yeah, mm-hmm. like, how, like, how are these made? But, like, I guess you guys like you that. assume I mean, that, shot. like, some of these were made from the, uh, like, just on the Brute homeworld and stuff like that was the idea. You just didn't run into them as much, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, like, yeah, it kinda... is weird that they wouldn't be carrying these things on, like, and, and, high charity. And the Brutes yeah. are not using Brute plasma rifles anymore. That, They're I using regular plasma rifles. Yeah. It's like, 
what's going on mm-hmm. here? <laughs> no, it's. I think it is weird things where they were just like, well, we changed our mind. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's and then they just kind of got to make up a canon reason or so, or someone does it. Like, or they just don't bring. Or it they up. don't. Yeah. Even, yeah, they're like, oh, this weapon just you don't see it anymore. So we are driving our way to the open area. We kind of go through pretty much the whole level, and we yeah. drive to like the end of it. And we fight a Covenant anti-air emplacement, and we open an LZ for the Forward Unto Dawn. A cool music cue happens here, and the UNSC Forward Unto Dawn swoops in dramatically, kicking up dust, sending vehicles, corpses, and debris from the previous battle fucking everywhere. I didn't know. I totally forgot about that. I'm... (laughs) It came in and I turned around and I just saw everything go to the back. And I, I, I sat there and I was like, oh my god. Yeah. This is a really cool moment. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I don't think there's a lot of times in games where you're kind of given the actual size of vessels that big. Because, like, you're fucking teeny tiny compared no, to that ch- frigate. And, like, and, and it, it looks it's good. in your no. face. Oh, yeah. Like, it, the way it comes in, it's cool. I was in, in the tank it, and it cool. pushed me back, right? Yeah, like, it, like literally, like, it pushes you away. That doesn't make sense, because if you're standing there as chief, you don't get pushed back. So, it's like, ridiculous. His big yeah, ass, push. if you sit well, in the tank. Well, I guess tank. it was, like, so you don't, it was probably just so you yeah, don't get but squished by it. But I remember still, standing there, and I'm like, why am I not? It wasn't a tank, it was a prowler, but still. Well, that makes sense. Not a prowler, a fucking, what's the other one? Why am I? Chopper. Chopper. Yeah. Um, I'll be Johnson, who in Commander Keys. I'll be the Marine after that. Did the elites get a fix on the cartographer? Yes, ma'am. Just on the other side of that wall, but it's surrounded by brute heavy armor. Um, and if you skip the cut, it, which I did, if you skip the wall section leading to the cartographer, so you can go to that locked wall, and then the dialogue. Oh, changes. but you. Oh, and you can change. Like if you just don't go there to begin with. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So this is that dialogue. Oh. Johnson, have the elites found anything? A structure on the other side of that wall, man, but it's surrounded by brute heavy armor. Don't worry. I've got a plan. If we can't fly over the wall, we'll go right through it. Chief, take one of the tanks. Lead the way. If you find any locked doors, Spark will be happy to pry them open. So this, when do you get, I'm confused. When do you, because this is the one that I got, I think, the uh, the so, cutscene. You're con- you're confused when that dialogue changes. Oh, is yeah, it's it, it different. The first so time? if you go to the locked door, like. The first time, you this get, is what. You get told you can't go through, yeah, so you okay. know where it is. But That's, okay. if you don't go there, you technically which, don't which know I where did. it is. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. So yeah, I did go to the locked door first. Then I knew mm-hmm. where it is. So, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we jump in our tank. We roll out to the wall entrance we've been talking about, and then a marine comes in with. Tank beats ghost. Tank beats hunter. Everything. That's a very iconic line, I oh, feel. Yeah. It's, it's like good. one I really remember. Did anyone oh. did anyone notice Nolan North? Yes. Yeah. I was just gonna well, say okay. Yeah, Nolan North is is just a Marine. Oh, he yeah, is? he's a Marine yeah. or an ODST. <laughs> Interesting. He was driving me around. His That's some funny. of his his dialogue's pretty good. That's yeah. Great. Interesting. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm like Nolan North probably didn't do Uncharted yet. Like yeah. Nolan no, he probably North was more just a, a pretty more low, yeah. yeah. Low key. Absolutely. You know what's funny? Like I Nolan North's counterpart is pretty much Nathan Fillion. I feel absolutely. They're like very similar. They sound yeah. pretty similar. They look similar. Yeah. Like no, nah, actually, they don't look similar. They sound similar though. Sure. And then yeah, Nathan Fillion is Buck. <laughs> oh so, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so we move through the wall. We let our ordnance through, and we find our first auto turret here. The automated turret is a form of equipment similar in design to a sentinel, as its name implies. The auto turret acts as a fully automatic defense system. It is also so far, only encountered in the Ark, the Covenant, and Halo. Is that the thing that you throw out and it just like opens up? And, that thing sucks. Yeah, it's pretty it, bad. It didn't do anything yeah, for me. It just really kind of floated there. I was I was like walking into it and pushing it towards the enemies to see if it would yeah, do anything. Yeah, I don't even. It's funny. There are so many things in this that I don't remember at all. I think <laughs> the, I, I think playing That's back the equipment is something that I realize I'm like it's so it's all, like I remember when Halo 4 came out and we're going to talk about armor abilities you get to there but like armor abilities were so screwed we'll get them reach. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, no, you're right. But I feel like in more so in Halo 5 yeah, they I got were, you. or sorry, Halo 4 they were like really like armor abilities suck. Um oh, say say that's Promethean Vision. Oh my god. I forgot about that Dude, shit. That's all I use in oh multiplayer. My that's god. all anyone ever uses I, in multiplayer. I forgot about that. I forgot about stuff like oh my Halo 4's multiplayer. They really did didn't they go pretty like Call of Duty. Tall, yeah, ish like I oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. <sighs> Interesting. So the next part, um I this is where I'll say something I was gonna say earlier. I feel like 
once we get past Floodgate, the whole game kind of like really changes to this like war scenario. Oh yeah, this is what I remember of Halo. Like the, when I when I have my good memories back of like I'm like, oh Halo Three was it? Like that was the one I really remember having these. Like I remember taking down these scarabs. I remember getting in the Hornets. I remember like it's all it's all very clear to me. Yeah, and I, I think it's interesting. Like again, like th- playing through this, like I didn't realize how like th- after Floodgate, like th- th- yeah, I don't know. Th- it just seems like it's such a like it's a battlefield. It's a fucking battle, man. Like th- and like everyone's involved now. Like yeah. you know, the yeah, elites weren't really in the first half of the game, but they're in in the second half. It's just I don't know. It just love feels... the green banshees. I gotta say, or uh, yeah, the, the green banshees. Oh, I'm sorry, and, yeah, and, and, no, and phantoms. Are there banshees? I think the banshees see... are green too. Oh, I didn't notice that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Again, another I, I put it in the doc, but another detail that like the the Covenant separatists kind of like re coat their vehicles to like stand out. Mm-hmm. Um, well, no, it's great. They're green. They know allies for the every all the other military are green. Maybe I guess it's for so, yeah. Chief. Oh, true. That's so what I'm, th- I'm thinking. They're just going along. Yeah. So um, I I just put like general scarab discussion section. I love how like you come out of the wall. Chips Dubbo pulls up with the gauze yeah, on, and he's driving takes you, you down <laughs> to like, and then the fucking tanks come through. You get out, you get into the tank, and you drive down, and like it, it like again, like the war aspect of no, Halo. No, it feels like it really mm-hmm. feels uh, prevalent. It's hitting the fan, shit, absolutely. Did it's you guys take down the scarab in a different way? I mean, I I didn't even get onto it. I just the, the tank does the job, man. Yeah, I blew out the back and then took out the shield. Yeah. I got a ghost and went off the ramp and got onto it and splattered a couple jackals. <laughs> I just did it that way. Nice. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's I like the scarab again. It's cool how they give you so many different options to take it down. Like, yeah. I finally noticed the shooting the legs. Yeah. I never shoot, did that before. Yeah. Shoot the legs, and then you can it, shoot. It's that only one. Like back. Yeah. Well, to bring it down, I think yeah. it gets back up after I think the tank is just really OP against yeah. the scarab, and like you can take it down pretty easily. Like all I did, I shot out one of its leg. It went down, and then I like went around the back and shot out the back, and then mm-hmm. shot the, the energy shield thing. So. Yeah, it's pretty easy. So, um, in that little thing that you went off of that ramp, there's yeah. like a little in, an uh, like a little bait. It's like a little fort in the middle of like the fight. And there's a a truth sermon that can be heard in there. And truth says, "I have opened the portal of this hollowed place, this shelter from Halo's fire, in hopes that more of our covenant would join us. Alas, save for a rabble of heretics and their demon allies, we are all that remains on this new world." So we must temper joy and sorrow in our hearts for those who were left behind. New voice actor, right? I think we, yeah. we talked about that. Definitely noticeable. What's the voice actor? Like, he sounded, I feel like... It's a, I, I don't know the voice well actor. Known, yeah. I couldn't Truth. tell you. Either of them. Mm-hmm. Hey. But he definitely doesn't sound like old. He, Halo 2, he kind of sounded like I can't tell and, which one I like better. Yeah. I lo- definitely like Halo 2 Miranda Keys better. Definitely. But for true, I definitely do too. I don't yeah. like the new... She's very stilted, it sounds. It's very... It's 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 it almost just sounds like she's not a good voice actor. Like I forgot just, Ron, Ron Perlman's Lord Hood? Yeah! yeah. What, what do you mean you forgot? I, I forget! Compl- I guess I just like... You mean, you mean kind of look? Well, like it's him. more like I, I know... It's more like I knew much. that, but it was like, oh yeah, duh. Like, and I was like, oh, but it is. Ron. You know, like... Um. Pro- oh, it is someone. No, like I feel like this is one of that guys. Those guys, Terrence uh, Stamp. Have you ever seen him before? I feel like I've seen him in a lot of movies. Like most notably, um, uh, the Haunted Mansion from Disney. No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> he plays Truth. Yeah, I feel like I, it's just a guy I've definitely seen in things. So I, I, I was like, that his his voice sounds familiar. In which game? He's in Halo Three. He plays Truth. Okay. Interesting. His there name for everyone is Terrence Stamp. I feel like, I feel he like looks he's familiar. one of that that guy, one of those guys. Like, oh, it's that guy. I'm just trying to see. He's if very I see him theatrical. In yeah, I'm trying to see. If I yeah, see him. I mean, it's a kind of a very theatrical. Role. No, absolutely. Could have used some of that in Mortal Kombat this year. Anyways, continue. Yeah, wanted. Remember that game, 360 game. Dude, the movie is <laughs> sick. The game's surprisingly sick too. I remember actually really enjoying that game. You know that comic is that comic has absolutely nothing to do with the, what that movie is about. No. It's like it's about a bunch of villains and like super villains apparently in the comics, and it's ridiculous. Hold another tangent. Anyways, so while we're destroying the scarab, the shadow of tent can uh, the shadow of tent the shadow of intent can be seen can be seen entering the atmosphere. I'm going to be shipmaster because like, I just like talking as him. Not bad, Spartan. I saw that explosion from orbit. Truth's fleet lies in ruins. Fine where the liar hides. So I might place my boot between his gums. 
We'll know soon enough, shipmaster. The chief heads up the spire, and Johnson says, Infantry on the spire, mop em up. The chief makes it to the top, where Kilo 2-3 arrives with the Arbiter and two Marines. And, well uh, done, Spartan. Yep, he says that. Guilty Spark opens the entrance door, and the team enters the facility. And then he, Guilty Spark opens another door, but he has trouble unlocking it. A Marine goes, hey, what gives? <laughs> oh, this is Nolan North. They, yeah. this, Nolan North said this for me. <laughs> Nolan Northy man. Yeah, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Who wants to be Guilty Spark? I'll be him. It seems I've crossed a circuit. Well, let me have a look at it. When the Marine approaches, Guilty Spark faces the Marine, fires a blue laser at him. <laughs> he yelps in pains and jumps back. Oracle! Vadim raises his weapon, walks around Guilty Spark cautiously, just in case Spark becomes an enemy. Little bastard stung me! I did not want you to come to any harm. Got a funny way of showing it. <laughs> Guilty Spark gets back to work and succeeds. Excellent. This way. Grunts are sleeping while a brute captain is urinating in the corner of the room. He is? I didn't catch that. Yeah. Oh, I, really? This was yeah, something I feel like was uh, like super well known in the Halo community. I don't remember I, that. That this yeah. specific grunt or brute was peeing. He's just taking a, he's taking a piss. So and they it, have penises and I'm, then. And I'm, I'm pretty sure if you like go into th uh, theater mode, like you can, he's he's. Like, there's just a stream of piss, like, yeah. coming out of his armor. What? Have we... I feel like I might have asked this question before. Are there female brutes? Great question. Yeah, it's a good question. Well, it would be kind of funny if they were all dudes. Not uh, funny it because... Be. It was just... Well, it well no, I guess literally, physically, they can't be all... Like, it wouldn't be... But, like, if they was... I'm wondering how that this works. Is, this is the same thing in Mass Effect. There's no female Turians for a while. There's no female Solarians for a while. You There's assume only they female Asari. There's no male Asari. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting to see where, like... Why did why did when they were writing this lore? I mean, it makes sense from a war perspective. That you would, but, but it's like, like why in Mass Effect are there only Turian dudes? Well, but are there elite women? Yes. Where 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 do we see them? Exactly. Okay. But they exist. Yep. exist. Okay. <laughs> so it's, yeah, like, and I guess it does make like I guess it is weird because like there's a female general for the humans. So I guess these other societies but don't have female, female in female women or I mean like. <laughs> female women <laughs> female humans i feel like are easier to do because we are humans where no like, absolutely i'm surprised they just didn't. maybe it's harder to like they're cult, like yeah well well know. you know what i truly think it is i think it's they didn't want to animate a different they didn't want to have to take time to de to, to develop another like model i'd assume it could that, be would take, it. that would take time like I'm I'm curious if you can play as like a female. No, I guess you can't in the. You can play as a female Spartan, obviously in the. Like, yeah, it's a different body type. Yeah, but, but like for female elites, I don't think you could ever do that. It was always just the, you just play as an elite. I know there's a female elite in Halo Legends, but I'm trying to think of like any other instances where well, it's weird. They it's didn't even it's just change like Krogan in Mass Effect. Like there's not female Krogans until like much later in the series, and it's like I'm curious like where in the meeting like. You know why are why do we have like all gender male gendered races, but there are females and they talk about them, but they're just not shown. It's 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 an interesting like yeah. I'd be uh, and it's, it's I feel idea. like an easy thing to do for the elites one is you just you make them look the same, but you, put you just put a, on. Well, yeah, or or you just give them like a female voice, you know, like a voice actor. That's like, what they do with the Krogans. And just make them a tiny bit smaller or some or like or bigger. <laughs> like yeah, whatever it is. But it's just I don't know why I just thought of that. I definitely... There's concept art of a female brute. From, is there? From the cancelled Halo MMO. I didn't even know they were making a Halo MMO. I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, they're like, they're kind of like skinny. They're slimmer. Let me see. What the yeah, fuck? Doesn't that look that almost looks terrifying? Very odd. I don't, I don't know. Don't that like that might be all. a little exaggerated. I feel like that's probably the right idea, but they, they might be just like more chimpanzee size. and Right. A different like monkey type. Yeah. Sure. Hmm. Anyway, the next area should look very familiar. Without looking at the dock, do you remember where this the, these areas look familiar from? Oh, fucking Halo One, right? Yeah. Because I I even know like I was playing the today, cartographer, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh shit, this is like it was cool to experience that so soon after so, and be able to recognize it. Right. So again, it's like the Halo <laughs> installations all have the same architecture. This is the cartographer room. Yeah. So the cartographer yeah. room is going to be laid yeah. out the same and on Absolutely. every Halo. I did notice that. I took going down those uh, all those ramps and stuff. Yeah. Yep. I was like, yeah. oh, bringing back the memories of a few weeks ago. So we get down to the cartographer and we. Activated. Upon activating it, a holographic projection of the Milky Way appears before a chief. Uh, I'll be chief. Supr as in a surprise manner, that's our galaxy. We're beyond the rim. Two to the eight eighteenth. Oh, I'm sorry. 
two to the 18th light years from galactic center, to be precise. The hologram changes to a map of the Ark. What is this place? The Ark. This is the Ark? I always assumed it was part of a shield installation, but it seems I was mistaken. <laughs> That's a first. So, interesting. Shh. Guilty Spark does not know about the Ark. Interesting. And he mentioned... But, well, but, whole, so whole, does he, he know... Says, Oh, I'm sorry. Continue. He's going to say something, but what were you going to say? Does he? He knows of the Ark. I thought, but he does. He thought it was just part of. Some, I thought that's what he was saying. Like he's he about. Part, he's about to have a comment about it. Guilty well, Spark turns uh, and round and looks at Master Chief. Not at all. While I had a complete understanding of Installation Zero Four, my makers wisely limited my knowledge from all other strategic facilities. Compart Whoa. compartmentalization. Compartmentalization in case. I was ever captured by the flood. So maybe he didn't know about it, or maybe well, no. he knew it existed, but he well, knew nothing about it. So the way I just think from is like he says, I always, I always assumed it was part of a shield installation. So maybe. So what just, is a shield installation? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I don't, it seems like oh, he wait, knew of the arc, but he didn't know Holland. what like it. Oh, a yeah, a like, shield world installation is a four run, like requiem. Hold on. A shield world or shield insulation is a forerunner insulation that is designed to be a shelter from the activation of the halo array. Each shield world encountered to date has significant differences in their design. Pre presumably, each was constructed for different purposes. Access to shield worlds is only possible upon intimate activation of the halo array, but is known to open on other occasions, such as a reclaimer being present. Is so? Why could is Requiem? Just... Requiem is a four is a shield world. Oh. And Halo Four, Halo Four, dude, I it is news to me. I mean, we would have found that out at some point. Yeah, oh, fuck. I wow. Am. Okay, so so like I said, it seems like he knew of the Ark, but he was like, I just I didn't know exactly what where it was or what it was. Or what it was. Yeah. But he's like, oh, it all makes sense. But even if he was captured by the flood, like, what could they do to him? I guess like they can't. They could like get so smart that maybe they could tinker with him and figure out what's on his memory drive. Would that's that probably be the, the, like not they couldn't do all anything. They do is collect bodies. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So like, Great, I mean, we saw in Halo Two with him having what is a penitent tangent. Mm -hmm. So that would make sense. So yeah, they would just basically get advanced enough to the point where they could tinker with him enough to get that information out of probably. him. Probably. Master Chief goes. Can you tell me exactly where we are? Here, a specific area on the hologram is highlighted. And truth, near one of the Ark's superliminal communication arrays. I'm afraid. Unfortunate. The meddler has triggered a barrier, a defensive perimeter around the Ark's core. In the distance, two Covenant Banshees with a phantom can be seen flying by the cartographer. Vadim gives the chief a concerned glance, and the Master Chief walks further around. The barrier will be difficult to disable. However, that, how, <clears throat> how odd that my makers would place such a comprehensive defense system around a single... Oh, my. What is it? Before Spark can answer, a loyalist phantom approaches. Phantom. The Arbiter in Chief get in position to fight the approaching Covenant ship as 343 Guilty Spark continues to hover deep in thought. Spark, move. The monitor finally notices the phantom and the flies toward Chief and Vadim and they engage the Covenant ship from the ground. The phantom returns fire. We must get past that barrier only or the meddler will destroy it all. On the way to the evac, we encounter a, the Brute Stalker for the first time, which, which are equipped with the Mauler, incendiary grenades, and radar jammers. So we, uh, this is the first time we can pick up the Mauler, the Type 52 pistol. Uh, this is a Jiro Hani sidearm used by infantry and security forces of the Covenant Loyalists during the Human Covenant War and functions as a handheld shotgun. So... I guess it's supposed to be like a sawed off. Like I'm trying to think of like an equivalent. Like an AA-12 has like a like a shorty. Right. It's like a short shotgun, but it has like a barrel or like a drum mag. But mm -hmm. it's yeah, not like a not, saw I mean, off. It's funny. I completely for again a weapon I completely forgot existed in Halo at all. Cause you it, didn't pick it up. I did. Oh, okay. I just for a minute to shoot, and I was like, oh yeah, this has existed, and then that was it. <laughs> the Mauler is primarily based on Jirohani's pre-covenant technology, and has been in use since they first developed firearms. The magazine holds five shells of an unknown ammo type, and the Mauler is equipped with a small blade underneath, making it a formidable melee weapon. Trivia: The Mauler design and mechanics were were modeled after the pre-Halo after the pre-Halo weapon, the Excavator, which was a UNSC firearm that was shelved. I tried to, like, look up more context for this, because, like, that sentence to me doesn't make much sense, but I couldn't find much of anything. So, as that sounds like they had, there was a concept for a human weapon 
pre Halo One, and then it was reused as a concept for the brutes. That's right. That's what exactly. Yeah. That's okay. how I take it. Okay. Yeah. Um, the incendiary grenade can also be picked from up from these guys. The Type Three anti personnel grenade, aka the fire bomb, is a brute grenade. It is a multi-purpose infantry explosives munition first produced by the Sacred Promissary just a few months before the Great Schism. So the Sacred Promissary is like the armory on high charity okay um and this is like i'm like where Again. did this detail come from that mm-hmm. they were f- they made just before oh the by the way <laughs> yeah, like it they is, got some new guns or grenades. Yeah. it can be thrown 33 feet by an average soldier but is mainly used by brute stalkers upon impact with a hard surface the case converts to a liquid form burning at 2200 degrees celsius or 3992 degrees Fahrenheit. That's some tasty napalm. Jeez, man. That would burn through like the metal on anything. Like that would be like I feel like alien That's acid. Pretty fucking ruthless. Like that would get so hot. Oh yeah, you definitely. You know what I mean? Like even like what obviously. steel's melting point? Well, let's find out. Cause like I, I like obviously that's hot, but yeah. like how just how hot is is that? <laughs> I don't have any context that anything over like hundred degrees. So how many? How much was basically four thousand degrees Fahrenheit? So this is how hot <laughs> more that doubles steel's melting point. Jeez. Wow! So steel's Jesus melting Christ. point is well, okay, it's twenty five hundred to twenty eight hundred degrees uh, Fahrenheit. All right, it's almost double. So it's almost double. Interesting. Wow. And our last uh, piece of equipment, the radar jammer, uh, is an equipment in Halo Three that scrambles nearby players' motion sensors by creating a multitude of false dots on the radar of everyone within range. While it can create uh, chaos for enemies, it also has the same effect on teammates. Uh, some trivia, when a, when a player deploys a radar jammer in campaign mode, brutes will sometimes become confused and look around distractedly. Uh, this clearly suggests that the brutes have some form of radar system similar to an Elite or Spartan 2. I expected them to be like, it doesn't work on them, yeah. just like the flare. So that's what you, so the flare was this game, right? I'm, obviously. Yes. That's so funny. I'm like, so this doesn't work. Oh, no, it does. It works. That's cool. That's nice. So we get evac and that's the end. Of the arc. I really like the incendiary grenade, another weapon I totally forgot existed. Really helpful for the flood, obviously, when they come. But, like, uh, yeah, very, very interesting weapon. Did you guys pick up the, uh, there was, like, invincibility and invisibility? I picked equipment. up invisibility. Yeah, 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 there's there's stuff hidden in these levels. Mm-hmm. But, again, it's, like, the equipment isn't that interesting that, like, yeah. you want to go scour I for it, I right? did find the the one, I know we're not, I know we're not talking uh, them this time, terminals. But like yeah, I did this this th- level. Yeah, yeah you like was, went into this room. Yeah, and it was right like the, okay. the walking. Did, did I already did we talk about that? Did I miss that? I'm an idiot. No, no, we, no, 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 no I forgot about that. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like all maybe, text based. Yeah. Maybe for yeah. the last episode, which like, is the next summary episode. Or something, I, you know, like, yeah. yeah, like it, it. They're they're a little like too high. Level. Honestly, I re- I started reading it and I was like, eh. yeah, it's like they're like it's it's kind of hard to like. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. We're still talking about Machinima in the last episode, right? You're yeah. going to do that? Okay, cool. Man, when we get to Halo fucking 5. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm actually, like, really interested to get to, like, ODST. <laughs> like, not so much Reach, but ODST and 4. Yeah. And Reach, five. I don't remember. 5 is going to be real interesting for all of us, I feel. Definitely. Because it's, like, definitely, like, the Halo with, like, the least experience from any of us. Especially you. Since well, yeah, I played, played it. it only once, I think. Right. right. Yeah. I played it once through and they don't co-op and i'm just like i really hit, don't remember yeah, i would just it. remember the fucking fights from it the promethean fights or whatever like the, the big fucking yeah, terrible ah oh, okay terrible. talk about reused assets yeah. yeah all right let's do the covenant the eighth campaign level in this level the player must stop the prophet of truth from firing the ranks before reaching truth the unsc and covenant separatist forces must deactivate three towers powering the defense barrier protecting the prophet's citadel and face off against a massive vehicular covenant force including two scarabs um finally united by the common purpose of stopping the rings the grave mind offers an alliance with master chief and the arbiter and only to betray them once truth is dead while Co- uh, while cortana's solution to the flood is finally revealed this is the longest level in halo 3 it is the last level in which you will fight the Covenant. It is also one of only four levels that is cut into three rally points rather than two. This level is significant as it is the Covenant's last stand. After the Covenant have been defeated, there's only one last threat the UNSC have to deal with, the Flood. It is also the first level which you can use a Spartan laser. I never put it in context like that, that like, <clears throat> this is this the end, is of, the end this, of the Covenant. The covenant. Yeah. Yeah, like you wow. kill truth, spoilers at the end of this level, and the covenant is over. Yeah. Like, 
It's it's dissolved, it, basically. It like, yeah. I mean, there's two more levels of the game, but like for some reason that just didn't doesn't really dawn click. On me. Yeah, like, uh, and again, I think that has something to do with the way Halo 3's presentation is and how it's. No, I agree. Not that good. Well, no, and I I do think it's also at a time where like I don't know I was pretty young. At least for, this is for me, and I don't know if I really just was comprehending what it was even saying at certain points. Like I, like, especially with the part coming up near the end here, I. Just I'm like that's what they were, saying. and I don't think it was because like they did a bad job explaining and that. No, I think it's because I, I just I think wasn't. It has pl- something to do with it, man. Okay, I I, I re- like going back to the audio mixing. I think it's like a no, bad I think that's storm true. Of, of reasons that make it make the the intricate details of the narrative in Halo Three hard to decipher. Sure, like no, I don't know sense. in Kingdom Hearts. I know that I knew the story well when I was a fucking kid. Like, I yeah. understood that's it fair. fully. That's like, fair. I, I yeah, think yeah, it was yeah, just like the way... Compre- yeah. I mean, right. I guess I enjoyed Assassin's Creed, which I felt like was a semi-complex like complex story. Right, because they yeah. explained they it They did well. it well. Yeah, 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 that's true. And I fair think point. It, and I'm, I'm interested to see where we rank this compared to 1 and 2. I mean, I'll tell you right now so far. Uh, I'll keep it then. Hold it. <laughs> hold it. I'll keep it here. It's close to the chest. So once we are coming down on our phantom uh, or our pelican, we notice the green phantom for the first time. We see the back of it and we get a cool music cue. This is called Three Gates. I'm going to put that in here because it's pretty hype. Um, Once we have boots on the ground, we start with our Spartan laser. I'm pretty sure this is the last gun we were picking up for this game. The anti-vehicular Model 6 Grendel slash galleon non-linear rifle also known as the spartan laser is the unsc's ground-based man portable anti-vehicle direct energy weapon first That's off a mouthful good job just yeah. that was great <laughs> like i just want to round of applause Thanks. then also uh it totally shoots in a, in a line in a linear fashion yeah. so why is it non-linear what is going on <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? I, uh, I, it's the Ge- Galleon non-linear rifle. Uh, excuse me. It shoots in. A it line. shoots in a line. <laughs> it's literally a line of a laser. Anyways, I'm sorry. Continue. The Spartan laser is the most powerful infantry weapon fielded by the UNSC forces, even overpowering the rocket launcher. It is capable of p- penetrating multiple targets, including tanks. Unlike the sniper rifle, which can only penetrate infantry, it is alternatively known as the the Galilean, or in the player lexicon, the Splazer. The Splazer. The Spartan laser nickname originates from the fact that it was designed in parallel with the Mjolnir powered assault armor. So I guess the idea is like the Spartan laser. This was is made for a Sp- Spartan. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I don't think. Oh, well, Johnson uses it, but he's actually a special case. Yeah, he is um, a Spartan technically. Yeah. Um, I don't really know how strong Johnson is, like physically. But well, I would assume he has to have some enhanced strength. See, that's, that's after going this under Spartan one. It would be cool if they took that that step further to truly be like, no, this is like only Spartans can use this. What like it locks into your shoulder, it charges it up. Like right, it's like, powered it, it by you are the suit technology. Like it's That'd powered cool. by your like you're saying, powered by your your armor. At that yeah. point, just like make it a suit attachment, like that's a predator, so you know, yeah, put yeah, it on the shoulder. Yeah, I mean, That'd yeah. be sick. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, <laughs> interesting trivia here. The Spartan laser is currently the most expensive handheld weapon known to be produced by the UNSC. Account it cost 21 uh, or sorry 218,000 credits more more than the cost of four fully armed warthogs, 134 assault rifles, and over 7,266 fragmentation grenades. Their economy is really good because I feel like that's pretty low, but it has like a yeah, like you know it, what I mean? They're like, this is the most expensive, it's 200,000. I wonder how much a tank is. Like an, an well, but I, I'd be curious, honestly, today. just how their currency converts to like if they, they if really even someone has done that, money. like because like I'm saying, if that's their most expensive thing, credit wise, like that's to us like a two hundred thousand. What's something that's two hundred thousand dollars that you a can car. think of? A car. A car. A ca- a, I mean, well, that like a very expensive like a Lamborghini. Car. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, like, like even like maybe I was think, I guess maybe even like a house. A house. Right. But I like, think well, I mean that's cheap for a house. Well, yeah, dep- yeah, exactly. Depending on where you're at, whatever. That's a very nice car, very cheap house. So that's interesting to me that that that's their most expensive weapon that they create, and it's only two hundred eighteen thousand, whatever of their dollars it is. Yeah, I don't really know where they talk about money. I if mean, you yeah, want to, like, there's credits in like Halo 5's like player no, economy, yeah. mm-hmm. and like you spend credits. On like shit, I wonder but... if it's just like the. The, the Star Trek so generic. I'd be curious. Yeah. They, there definitely they, is some lore behind that. Any space something. game, Mass Effect, it's credits. Yeah. It's like there's always Star like Wars. A, it's just a so universal, yeah. like simple, dumb currency. Mm-hmm. 
Interesting. The master. Okay, so there are three towers. Master Chief is at Tower One. The elites are at Tower Two, and Johnson is at Tower Three. The Master Chief and his squad secure the beach and destroy the anti-air wraith. Beachhead secure, Commander. Uh, hostile anti-air has been neutralized. Hold position. I'm on my way. Shipmaster, begin diversionary bombardment. I will beat the Prophet's shield like a drum. By the time the barrier falls, he will beg for mercy. <laughs> Fucking sick. We journey to Tower 1, and we fight, obviously, on the way there. We get there. We turn it off. Good work, Chief. That's one. The Arbiter should be just about to... Tower 2 shuts down. That's two. It's all up to Johnson's team now. Chief and Commander Keys watch Tower 3 for a moment and remains active. Get back outside, Chief. Wait for transport. Johnson, come in. Over. Brute reinforcements, ma'am. Static. We're pinned down. I'm on my way. Negative. Fire's too heavy. Everyone, fall back now. Static and cut off. Sergeant Major! No response. Johnson, can you hear me? Chief, you need to link up with the Arbiter and proceed directly to the third tower. Make your way back to the beach. We get back to the beach and we enter the Hornet. The AV-14 attack VTOL, uh, also known as the Hornet, is the United Nations Space Command Assault and Reconnaissance Aircraft. The Hornet is capable of fulfilling multiple combat roles from close air support to special forces insertion trio. Can I just m make it a point that we need to all say United like you just did? United. It was just great. I just wanted to say that. I did? Yeah. I said good. it like that? Yeah. It was a really good... Okay. I like, awesome. I'm totally not like following what you're putting down. <laughs> you you uh, just said United. Like United States. It like was good. United That's all States. Yeah. The United Nations Space Command. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> the AV-14 Hornet first entered service during the UNSC's campaign against insurrectionists. <laughs> <laughs> it played a big part in Operation Trebuchet and was used to provide support <laughs> to the infantry on the ground and to insert the strike teams. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restart that. Yeah. Uh, actually... You just back up if you want. It's okay. Just start back at the, the, the it, whole thing. It was funny. I don't want to cut it out. Mm. And it played a big part in Operation Trebuchet and was used to provide support to infantry on the ground and to insert strike teams in combat zones. Ye fucking ho. And we take the Hornet to Tower 3. It's kind of tough to get out of a, like a southern accent when you slip into one. It's, it's really it's rough. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> the barrier falls and the shadow of 10 advances to the Citadel. So we get into Tower 3, we shut it down, and Shipmaster goes, Now, Prophet, your end has come. A slipspace rusher suddenly appears. High Charity emerges from it and plummets downwards toward the Ark. High Charity by the gods. Brace for impact. The structure flies far over the Citadel and the Separatist carrier to and the Separatist Carrier. Debris from High Charity strikes through the shadow of Intense Hall. A flood dispersal pod breaks apart in mid-air. Part of the pod crashes through the window right above Chief as it stops and hits the elevator window, glowing eerily. The Chief raises his saw rifle and prepares to engage the flood. Shipmaster's Carrier is out of commission and Chief must get to the Citadel and take down Truth. Along with a, with a heavy artillery escort, we drive to the Citadel and meet Heavy Resistance. So the two scarabs fight. I forgot to put like a yeah. discussion. A lot of fun. I mean, you know, <laughs> hornet, <laughs> hornet tank. Like you got scarabs options. are fun. Yeah, I, yeah. I forgot. I didn't know about the hornets for a little bit. So I was, I was down there with a mongoose. No, oh, around with, really? a, with a dude with a rocket launcher. Oh, oh my god! I, mean, I was, no, I was getting bullied. Yeah, no, dude, I love. Fun. I should have, I should have said, I love the hornet. I was like, I was like, when does this come in? Because I remember it says level. specifically, this is it. Yeah, and because you, you see it in one of the earlier levels, like when you're on the beach the at storm. some point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I was like, oh, when do you get to fly that shit? And I, I. I'm surprised they've totally gotten... I feel like they've totally gotten rid of that, right? You, the Hornet's not in anything else. I was trying to think... Reach? Or is it a different... It's definitely in Reach, or it might be a different variant, but... I really like that. I, don't I felt like it was a pretty good like response to there's the gotta There's a whole a, level... Th there's gotta be a flaunt. No, th that's a long sword. No, there's another level in Reach, where you're going from rooftop to rooftop. When you have to escort Buck. In the uh, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. 
I, you know, oh, you can't wait. Yes. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, so it's got to be a Hornet. After that, after yeah, this, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I might just start playing that tonight. Uh, like, or, or after, gotta finish Halo 3. After Halo 3, yeah, <laughs> yeah. obviously. No, I'm just going to skip. No, yeah, no, nah, I'm fuck, just gonna, that, yeah. fuck this game. Yeah, fuck we're, we're going straight to ODST. <laughs> All right, so we take down two Scarabs, the last Scarab fight of the game. The last time we will encounter the Covenant forces... The, the covenant as we the normal covenant mm-hmm. the the covenant Ends itself here. but now it's all the aliens right now basically now again like because it's dissolved so well, when you run it's into the covenant jet, i i just covenant remnants them, yeah whatever covenant yeah. remnants covenant factions factions of covenants covenant splitter cells whatever you want to call yeah. them um the chief and vadim enter alone the door they entered fully closes and bolts up the entrance is a large hallway with screens mounted along the walls we have our First Cortana moment of this level. It asked, and I answered. For a moment of safety, I loosen damnation upon the stars. And then Prophet of Truth uh, intervenes. My faithful, stand firm. Can I just... I'm sorry, I had another question. Why does Chief... Do we know why Chief is getting these visions? No. That's okay. It's never really explained. I that's mean, it, I, was, I guess like, it kind of makes like, sense as Cortana interfaced with him for so long. Not, sure, not but that like, long. Yeah, but that's what really I mean, not. That's, what that, I mean. that's the interesting part. I feel like the the, the fact that the games like, take a while to come out yeah. makes you feel like like Cortana they've been together Chief, forever. Yeah. But they really haven't. So like that's what's confused. Like is she sending like since she was integrated into his system? Like he's a new like, and I guess again you can could get into the minutia. Could have just been like Cortana herself that did something to him like that. Like left, but like she is a different kind of AI. Yeah. Like I'm curious if she sent these like almost transmissions. Go back that, to episode one when we talk about. Yeah. <laughs> she sends. She's sending these transmissions back to Chief's interface somehow. I don't think because it's an, she knows because she's obviously aware of what's happened since since uh, he's left Halo. Like she's been getting fucked with. Like, See, I wouldn't necessarily say it's Cortana sending messages to Chief. I think it's like almost like. Like his neural link is like receiving messages that she just said. It's not that Cortana is actually like necessarily trying sending them to yeah. send him messages. He's just getting like fragmented garbles of Cortana because he was connected to her. Mm-hmm. That make that would make I, sense. That's kind of what I see it as. Um, because like I, I'm trying to even remember like what Cortana says in the level Cortana. Well obviously get to it, mm-hmm. but um, no, yeah, that's it. Because I was just curious. I had this thought today while I was playing. I was like, and this is, it's funny that I've never really thought of it before. I was like, yeah, how is she? Getting these messages to him. But View continue. screens around the chief light up, and the prophet of truth uh, is seen making another speech. The chief and the arbiter hurry to find a way. Can somebody else read truth, just so I'm not like reading on top of myself? Yeah. Though our enemies crowd around us, we tread the blessed path. In a moment, I will light the rings, and all who <clears throat> believe shall be saved. Master Chief and Thel Vadim discover an elevator with a screen in front of it, showing Johnson behind truth. Held aloft by a brute, Johnson punches the brute in the face to no effect. <laughs> Chief, how close are you? And that was Commander Keys. They look up to, uh, to, uh, they look up. The height is phenomenal. Not close enough, uh, says Master Chief. The view changes to a control center. Johnson is being thrown at the floor. That the best you got? A brute chieftain gives him an amused huff and picks him up around the neck and begins to strangle him. Oh, come on, impress me. The truth, uh, truth turns around to see what is happening. Stop, you imbecile. He wants you to kill him. Turns, Turns back. back to the Ark's console and speaks quietly. I prefer that you did not. The chieftain slams Johnson's head into a solid holographic console. What's the matter, big shot? Can't start your own party? I admit, I need your help. A pelican appears on screen behind them, unnoticed and rapidly approaching the main window. But that secret dies with all the rest. The pelican breaks through the window and crashes on to the ledge next to them uh, crushing a brute sending a spiker flying truth is thrown off screen landing near the spiker a brute captain gets up but keys blasts it with her shotgun johnson ejects a shell from her shotgun sound off (coughs) get out of here not without you more brutes surround Miranda and Johnson. Miranda fires away but the br- uh, at the brute with her shotgun. Their armor sparks from the shots, but the short-range weapon does not do severe damage to them, uh, and they remain on their feet. You delay the inevitable. One of you will light the rings. Miranda Keys draws a pistol and aims her weapon both ways. You cannot hope to kill them all. Keys pauses and lowers her weapons. She looks at her pistol. Ask Keys. You're right. She reluctantly aims the pistol at Johnson. Do it. Me, then you. 
Keys hesitates, slowly lowering her pistol, slightly with sadness on her face. Johnson says, now! Keys straightens up and aims. Five spiker shots are heard. <gasps> Commander Keys gasps, as Chris just did. Keys <laughs> drops her weapon. Johnson starts to run to her aid. No! A brute captain restrains Johnson, who still struggles, horrified. Miranda Keys falls to her knees, collapses, and dies. With five glowing spikes in her back, Truth slowly steps on screen, gingerly holding the spiker in his hand. Your forefathers wisely set aside their compassion. He looks down at Miranda and drops the spiker and shakes a fist to emphasize his speech. Steeled themselves for what needed to be done. I see now why they left you behind. You were weak, and gods must be strong. He forces Johnson's hand down on the panel with a smug look. Johnson, overcome with grief and shock from Miranda's death, doesn't resist. Instantly, the control terminal begins to change and heighten. Truth raises his arms in triumph. Six out of the seven holographic rings light up. Installation four has been destroyed, so the ring does not light up. And at the end of the corridor, Chief and the Arbiter emerge from the lift. Two flood tank forms drop from above. The Master Chief draws his assault rifle. The Arbiter activates his energy sword. Trio, your gray bind. All right. <laughs> do not shoot but listen let me lead you safely to our foe only you can halt what he has set in motion they lower their weapons cautiously several infection forms scurry between their feet towards the common enemy the prophet of truth the master chief and the arbiter look at each other obviously not trusting the flood but knowing they have no other choice so we are moving towards truth and we get these uh, hologram projections talking how could I have known the parasite would follow? Undoubtedly, this is the heretic's doing. A final bitter curse, clear evidence of treachery long hidden. So far are we along the path that I must strain to hear the clumsy patter of their pursuit. Know this, my brothers, they may foul the way with their charred and broken bones, but they will not stop the journey. Master Chief and the Arbiter cross the light bridge and come across Johnson, who is resting the dead Miranda Keys on his lap by her head by her head next to the pelican. The pair stare into Miranda's empty eyes until Johnson closes them gently. Stop the rings. Save the rest. I'm just going to... I just want to say here really quick. Johnson completely... Why did he just gave up because Miranda died? Yeah. What a piece of shit. Wow. I'm just saying... Like, the, why... No why, empathy. I mean, I'll tie, like, don't be wrong. Like, that's very sad, and I'd be very sad that my best... I mean, like, like they would... I mean, they wouldn't have killed him, but they would have forced him to do it anyway. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess he doesn't... I mean, but hold out as long as you can, right? Like, nothing was... cut. Like, they weren't, like... Like, they could put, like... They killed the only leverage they had. No, they got rid of the leverage, so he had to do it. But why did he have to... They would have just had to torture him into doing it. Or they would have killed each other, which was the idea. Yeah. Which no, is, exactly. No, Which, but, again, is, mm. a, is something I feel like does not emphasize that, like, Miranda Keys is about to kill Johnson and then kill herself. Well, no, exactly. I would not have realized that now. But, it, I, but what I'm crazy. saying now, thinking back, it's interesting because you'd think they'd want both of them alive so they could use each other as leverage against each other. Be like, I'm going to kill that person if you don't do it. But now that they have no leverage and Johnson was just getting They the just shit, don't give Johnson the choice. But, like, what do you mean they don't give him the... Ch like, he could have... He has to cooperate because she's dead. There's no point of resisting. But, you know, Chief and them are... Like, what do you mean there's no point in resisting? You're I mean, I don't think... That, I, I mean, I guess I, we don't really know... True. We don't really... <laughs> All I'm saying is Johnson could have not done... Like, resisted for ten more minutes like he had been. Right, and but, Chief like, that's in foresight. You <laughs> no, I, but even still, like, it seemed like he was putting up a fight for a good long while there. And he's just... Since Man. Miranda died, he was like... Now nah, I'm done. Anyways, that's my nitpick of the episode. Continue. The chief continues to stare at Miranda, shoulders slumped, obviously disheartened, while uh, the Arbiter approaches the crawling form of Truth. His energy sword turned on, but at the ready. He grabs Truth by his robes and points his currently harmless sword in his face. Can you see, Arbiter? The moment of salvation is at hand. It will not last. Your kind never believe in the promise of the sacred ring. Life so weak beacons for the deluded. I will have my revenge on a prophet, not a plague. My feet tread the path. I shall become a god. You will be fooled. Nothing more. Truth! The voice! 
Truth rises and screams in pain. The flood spores shoot out of his mouth, and the affection lets out a pitiful squeal. The last of the high prophets is dead. Thel Vadim lets Truth's corpse fall to the floor. Vadim lets out a roar of triumph and deactivates his sword. The chief looks at him and nods, acknowledging him for ending the life of, of the prophet who declared war on humanity. They then turn to see Johnson carrying Miranda's body into the pelican. There is a moment of silence as they realize their victory has not been without loss. Suddenly, the ground begins to tremble. A massive tentacle rises up around them. Chief wields his assault rifle, and Vadim reaches for his sword. They both stare up at the tentacles, which are now reaching high above them. The grave mind laughs maniacally. Johnson leaps into the pelican cockpit and starts to take off. The chief climbs onto the control panel of the Ark and jumps onto the pelican landing gear. Chief grabs onto Thel's hand just before the pelican is out of the hole in the control room window that Miranda made. Both are knocked off the pelican uh, by tentacles and the pelican is sent spiraling out of control. On the ring, the tentacles swerve around them and multiple flood forms appear. Gravemine coming in. <clears throat> Now the gate has been unlatched, the headstones pushed aside, corpses shift and offer room. A fate you must abide. Thelva Adam holds a sword at the ready and the chief aims his assault rifle. They come back to back. We trade one villain for another. The tentacles, That's a great line. The, the tentacles retreat and combat forms come out to the control panel. Both heroes fight their way through the hordes of flood, which have betrayed them now that the halo rings have been deactivated. Fortunately, the Sentinels are also here and fighting the Flood. Uh, while we are escaping, we get another Cortana moment. I'm a thief, but I keep what I steal. Master Chief and Thelvada make it to the back. The lift is not working, so they jump down a shaft at the back of the room. Does a thief not keep what they steal? Yeah? I don't know. Okay, continue. <laughs> we, don't have to, we don't have to explore anymore. I just was more curious. <laughs> Thief game of the decade. Continue. Sorry. Do, do you want to, Do you know this joke between us two? I don't think so. I fucking hate Thief. Like the, the entire game, the ga well, or no, like, like the, new the, one, the, the newest, newest one. one. Oh god, it's trash. Don't even get me started. You like I, it I, play, I think I played it for like an hour or two. I think it's completely f like. F I think it's fine. Like I mm. don't think it's anything. Like I think it's. It's a worse. I feel Dishonored. like those games that came out really early for like the PlayStation Four. Well, it felt like it was like trying to do Dishonored, but it didn't do it nearly as well. Okay, and that's why I, and that's why I, uh, I don't know. He just was like, "This is like the most piece." Of, I'm like, "It's well, it's not. I've played way I, it's worse just games." Become an than inside this. Joke. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I, I don't like it, but like it's just the fact that he likes it. Like, <laughs> well, it's not. It. But that's the funny. I don't even like. I think it's fine. Like, yeah. I'm not even like. It's just I there. think it's. It's it exists mm -hmm. and it's I played worse stealth games, but I played way better stealth games. Great Continue. sidebar. Uh, next cutscene. Uh, this is the last cutscene in the level. The chief lands at the bottom of the shaft, landing in a room not unlike the entrances uh, to the three shield showers. He looks beside him as the arbiter comes down and then stands up. A flickering, spooky image of Cortana appears in the hallway running. She starts to turn the corner and disappears. After a split second, the chief casually walks around the corner as though amused by Cortana's antics. But Vadim is confused. What do you see? With Vadim trailing behind her, the chief looks around the corner. He sees a control panel. Cortana appears a second time, again only for a second, walking loftily towards it. She stops at the panel and disappears. The Master Chief goes to the panel and activates it. A view screen slides open. The chief and Vadim step out onto the balcony to watch a massive structure rise up out of the thick fog. It's a halo ring, incomplete, rising from the inside of the Ark's core. Cortana's plan is becoming clear. Thel Vadim turns and looks at the chief. A replacement ring for the one you destroyed? This is the... Th I don't. I didn't realize that yeah. the Ark was making a second Halo ring until playing it like this another, time. Yeah, like another mm -hmm. I had no idea. Which makes sense, and the, the Guilty Spark will talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, Master Chief... Was that me? Uh, I was I'd, Guilty Spark, I think. Yeah, actually. I'll just do Master Chief. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it me again? No. When did you know? A spark hovers from above... Uh, spark hovers up from behind the Chief and Vadim and comes up to the Chief. Just now, but I had my hopes. 
What will you do? Light it. Then we are agreed. A tactical pulse will completely eradicate the local infestation. I will personally oversee the final preparations. He flies enthusiastically around the chief and Vadim to who look at each other and then flies off towards his new halo, now talking to himself. Though it will take time to fabricate an activation index, I will see to the letter that... He flies too far away. How will you light it? They both turn to look at High Charity, knowing that Cortana still has the halo index required to activate the new installation for the level ends again it's like not it's not obvious that you're gonna remember that yeah cortana still has the activation index from alpha halo and she yeah. can use it to activate the reconstructed half constructed alpha halo so the idea is since it's half constructed it would only de- like destroy the infestation that's nearby i i don't know Right, like that's how would, what, you, assume, like, they're, how they're would saying, you assume that that's what's going to happen? I well, had to refer to the doc. Honestly, I referred to the doc to figure out because I, I was. It's not clear. Like, yeah. It's not clear well, at but all. he's like, he's like, uh, we can use this halo to do to do a tactical pulse. Right. Like what? So I assume that. So could you just do that? Though? Why can't you do that all the time? <laughs> what is going on? And I mean, this kind of makes sense for the last level, right? Like, yeah. I, I mean, it's kind of early, but like the last level is. Assault on the control room. That yep. part. It makes sense because it's the same ring. Yeah. So yeah. it looks exactly the same. So weird. Yeah. I, I like again, it didn't Something dawn, you don't it click didn't dawn in the, yeah, on, on the moment at all. It's it's just like, oh yeah, like I, I knew it looked like Halo One, but it is Halo, Halo 1. One. Yeah. I mean, it's a reconstructed so version of it. And that and then it makes sense. In the Warthog run in Halo, it makes sense why half the ring is fucking I feel so destroyed. dumb. Halo 2, will you go to a different Halo yeah. ring, right? Right? It, it wow. all makes sense once you understand it, but it's not explicitly told no, to you. No, it's weird. You're right. They didn't do a good job of explaining it. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. It's funny. This is the yeah. first time I, I've realized it. and it, But it's it's not something I w- ever thought about. Yeah. yeah. I think that about wraps us up for this episode number. Which which episode number was it? Sixteen. Sixteen. So we'll be 16. ending. We'll be ending with seventeen for Halo Three. Guys, come back next week to join us on our final episode of Halo Three. Jesus Christ! And then we'll be starting up fucking ODST. So weird. It's so weird that we're seven sixteen, about to be seventeen deep. You can find this podcast everywhere podcasts are found. Just search our name, Delco Nerd Network. We're on all the social medias at Delco Nerds. We have a Facebook page you can check out. We have a Discord channel you can check out. All these links can be found in any uh, uh, bios of basically all of our social medias as well as on our website. So please feel free to also email us over there. It's Delco Nerds at gmail.com. Our website is Delco Nerd Network. Dot com. So uh, if you want to come check out the podcast directly from our site, you can do that. I'd suggest, you know, going on the actual podcast apps to do so, though. Uh, guys, thank you so much for Gooch, for Chris. I've been Trio. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Stay nerdy, and we will see you next time.